Welcome to another edition of Baba TV, House of Consciousness, back home here in Washington, D.C., with my beloved elder, Baba Oduno. This brother has been in the community so long. You asked Brother Malik, attorney Malik Shabazz, about him. Ask Dr. Khaled. Ask anybody that has been uh, in Washington, D.C., and has done something for black people. Mayor Barry, they will tell you about this brother right here. Talk a little bit about, mm, my mind is jumping all over the place. I want to start first with the gentrification of Chocolate City, sir. Please. First and uh, foremost, uh, Baba T, <clears throat> giving honor always to Almighty God. Uh, I'm thankful for my mother. I'm thankful for my dad. And I'm really thankful that they didn't abort me. Why am I saying that August the 30th, 2017 on a Wednesday uh, because tomorrow will be my 70th year young and actually I'm already 70 because I spent uh, 9.5 months in my mother's womb but just to be I'm just thankful I'm thankful because when the Creator when the noble ancestors helped me uh, to be sober a little bit you know not the best all the time but a little bit and uh, as Baba T was saying in terms of um, gentrification, um, I have a little different slice in the circle. Uh, people of African descent, we have had an internal war where we have gentrified ourselves. Uh, let me do this right quickly. Even though we picked it up from some other people predominantly, when you have a brown bag test to get into a college or university, that is an element of gentrifying within the family. Talk to, talk to the people about what that meant. Oh, uh, what it means is that, uh, especially prior to 1960, uh, may even be pri let's just stay with 1960. Prior to 1960, uh, some people you had to send your photograph to your school. And we're talking about those HBCUs. And there was a slice of those HBCUs who carried the culture, who carried the identity, purpose, and direction predominantly of some other people. So I am not complaining. This is what happens with a colonized people. And I'm thankful that those who have come along to help us to get back to our real mother's breasts. Uh, some may call it Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. I just call it the plain old scratch cake from scratch. Not the box cake you reach for on the shelf. I'm talking about the one that your sisters and your mother and even your uh, father. But getting back to the gentrification. See, when you are uh, a person of a fraternity or sorority. You have to do triple, quadruple duty in humility because too often we are taught to separate ourselves on a whole lot of levels from the rank and file people who may not have gone to college, who may not have graduated. That's why when I talk about organizations, like let's say the women organization, I'll talk about the Colored Women in Association of 1896, right here in Washington, D.C. They have a building at 16th and R Streets Northwest. When we share with you what is called the National Council of Negro Women, um, you do not have to have a college degree. Uh, uh, they would encourage you to that. They would encourage you to have technical degrees and things like that. But what happens is that in 1900, when the Tuskegee machine helped to mobilize us in Boston, Massachusetts for the Negro Business League, August the 23rd through the 27th, 500 African descendants known by a whole lot of strange titles and strange names that I'm not going to get into because you have heard of it on your own. And if you haven't, just ask someone. But what happened is that those 500 men and women were independent businessmen and women, and some of them came from one, Deerfield, Colorado. 
there was an independent so-called black Negro town. Some of them came from, you know, Allenworth. There was an independent town coming into existence. You had the Piney Woods Country Life School. It wasn't quite in Mississippi yet. Lawrence Jones was in Iowa, but he got there in 1906 to build a school. You have Charlotte Hawk and Brown with her school um, in Sedalia, North Carolina in 1902. Mary McLeod, who had her school, the Daytona Agriculture School for Girls in 1904 in that part of Florida. But right here in Chocolate City, when it was the Chocolate City, uh, you happen to have right on, I think I have a, a button, a young button of Nanny Helen Burroughs and those women. They set up that school in 1909, right there in Lincoln Heights on six acres of land. They know that if you want to do something, you have to repossess the land. And when you repossess the land, you position yourself to repossess your tax dollars. Your tax dollars that go out to the state level and the federal level and your tax dollars also that go out to spiritual institutions oftentimes called churches, mosques, synagogue, the Basuna de Mawosi, uh, Yoruba temples and a native people's way of the greatest spirit. We have to look at ourselves, even though other people are doing what they are doing for themselves and doing against us, doing against humanity. We have the responsibility to build up our own vine and fig tree. What do we mean by that? What we mean is that we have to strive to teach before birth our land, our language, our culture, our identity, our purpose, and our direction. And I'm going to shut down here quick, but I'm going to use a quote from what people call uh, the Moorish Science Temple of America. It's called, Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom. Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom. And the fifth one is not coming to me. Help me out, somebody out. Yeah, Justice. Thank you, uh, Baba T. And so, but what happened is that, why do you think love is the thumb? Because when we cultivate love, I can turn the other cheek. Not because I only heard it from the Bible, but what happened is that I need somebody to turn the other cheek for me sometime. I guarantee you, your mama and your daddy and whoever was around you, when you had poo-poo in your cotton diapers, or your other diapers, sometimes they may not have felt like they want to change your diapers or change my diapers. My generation, for the most part, we had cotton diapers. <laughs> and when we drank milk, a larger percentage of us drank milk from our mama's ninny or somebody's ninny. Okay, that's the breast. And so what happened is that we have to work on building things internally. We have to go to the land. Some people know me through my grandfather Ephraim and my grandmother Hester Woods in Opelousa, Louisiana through the terminology, there is no culture without agriculture. It simply means that since you eat, you ought to have a percentage of your people who produce the food for you. Since you live in dwellings, you, you have a percentage of your skillful engineers and technicians and carpenters and plumbers and, he, and whoever it's supposed to be to produce your own houses. But it will not happen unless we, to the degree that it needs to be happening, unless we have our own schools. How long have you been homeschooled? You ask the average person who's 40 years of age, and they may say, well, I haven't been homeschooled. I'm trying to figure out what were you doing in your mother's womb if you weren't being homeschooled? Well, let, let me do it this way. I, I have been homeschooled. I'm still homeschooled by my mama and my daddy. My, my mama, second grade in Mississippi, my daddy, sixth grade. And 65% of the people our chronological age young, our parents didn't graduate from elementary school, which was the eighth grade. And so, Baba T, um, I'm asking our people to consider.
to go to green spaces for therapy. Because I need therapy. I don't know about you. You have to speak for yourself, wonderful uh, viewing audience. But we can go to the botanical gardens in your area. Where the trees and the plants and the water and the duct. And you may want to dig in the ground. You can go to the aquatic gardens if you happen to have one in your particular city. You can go to what you call the bishop's garden. And what this does is that we are under the wall of stress, spiritually, mentally, physically at all. And we need those things that will displace this counterproductive stress. Some of us may do yoga. Some of us may do Tai Chi. If you're kind of lazy like Baba Oduno, all I'm going to do is do power walking <laughs> on the track over here at Banneker. I may start out at one lap around, but I'll eventually get to 8 to 10 to 12 laps around after about six weeks. And that's what you call uh, 3.1 miles, which is called a 5K. The 5 is for grace. But let's do something, first and foremost, within yourself and within your family and within your own backyard. Don't be trying to talk about you're going to organize the block and you haven't meditated or prayed or whatever you do for your spiritual reinforcement to help to strengthen your own home, your own house. I say because when you do that, you will end up being a captain in that area and so when you come out on the block you can add yourself or yourselves to added blocks. Um, I am a stickler for women builders not because I'm not a stickler for men builders the reason why I'm a stickler for women builders is because the women predominantly nurture both the boy and the girl from before birth through nine years of age, predominantly. We're thankful for our fathers and our grandfathers and our brothers and our uncles and our significant others. When the men are doing what we are called to do and the women are doing what they are called to do and the children are being taught to be successful at character building, what does that mean? excuse me you don't have to say yes ma'am and no ma'am however I ought to have a spirit of gratitude what is the spirit of gratitude be thankful that your parents didn't abort you I'm gonna say that again be thankful I'm talking about physically abort you be thankful that your parents didn't spiritually abort you be thankful that your parents didn't psychologically abort you. Be thankful that your parents didn't emotionally abort you. Be thankful that your parents didn't physically abort you. You know how you sit up on the couch eating whatever you eat and they do not allow you to get exercise even when you can exercise inside your own home. This is a physical body and because it's a physical body, Baba T, and I am honored to share these few words. But most of all, let us have gratitude. Let us stand on integrity. And let us continue to do love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And since this is the month of August, the Honorables Amy Ashwood Garvey and Amy Joss Garvey and the Honorable Henrietta Benton Davis, I don't need to call the Honorable Marcus Mosias Garvey's name first. The reason for this is that some of you know his name, but who are these women builders? Who were the women builders around the Negro Business League? Who were the women builders around the Negro Convention movements of the 1830s? Who is Maria Stewart? Oh, we don't just have to talk about Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. Talk about your mother, your sister, your grandmother, because your genius is in your genealogy. And as I came to you, I came to you humbling myself with thanking Almighty God for our parents. 
And there's a terminology that was used in some places in this country. It was called oloco parentes, meaning that when you went to that place, those adults were in the position of your parents. We need to relook at that, but we need to be taught to get to that position to be able to do that. Because people are creatures of custom and tradition and habits. And so since we have gotten out of the habit, I tell people, I am not your elder. I'm five years of age. You know why I'm five years of age? Because I've been five. <laughs> I'm ten years of age. You know why I'm ten years of age? Because I've been ten. Now, what I will do in 2017, I will learn from the five-year-older. I will be taught by the 10 year older because I will use my eyes and my ears and even sometimes my body to show them that I can still move a little bit and uh, if I can give this to Baba, I would do something like this, okay? Yeah, yeah, you see? Because young people love to move. <laughs> and guess what? I'm still young in my lane. You know what I mean? No, I ain't you know I me. Mean? And uh, it's beautiful. And it's so beautiful seeing the brother that I'm thankful that Baba T, he was asking me, do I recognize him? <laughs> and I said, boy, well, I'll just say it like this. Uh, all of us are peewees in our own rights. That means that we're smaller people. But the beautiful thing is to keep the spirit of a peewee as we grow up, we're still peewees, because if you can keep your peewee spirit, sometimes, well, at least for Baba Oduno, I don't get as serious about myself as some people think I may be sometimes. So as I came to you, I would like to say that the motto of the organization of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, an African community league is one God, one aim, one destiny. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind for when the strong oppresses the weak. Confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man, but with faith and love and charity toward all, the reign of peace and plenty will be held into the world, and the generation of men shall be called blessed. Silah.